Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we're going to be doing another breakdown and analysis today. Uh, reaction and breakdown today. So I am going to be trying a new format with these uh, videos. Uh, this is actually not going to be technically a new format, but I'm going to be reverting back to my old video format where I just do the single video take. Now, what does that mean for you guys? I would simply be trying this out to feel out the audience and to see how it goes, but I will just be doing one video take where we react to it, listen to it, and pause on the way. Now, I know some people did not like that before, but hear me out and I'm going to explain why I'm going to be trying this out. I would like to be able to monetize my content and it is easier to do so whenever I have it all in one take. Uh, it, it gets very complicated in how that works, so I will spare you the details, but in order to really also make sure that the the content is monetized and it gets through to you guys, I will be trying this new format out. Also, just a little bit of a caveat here with the videos that I'm going to be breaking down and analyzing as well as reacting to in the future, the music that I am reacting to and breaking down will be able to be found in the description of all my videos going forward. So that way, if you have not heard the original of what I am breaking down, then you can go do so before listening to this. Because the full sections of music that are being featured in my videos where I listen to it all the way through without stopping, it's causing me issues with copyright. So that's going to be one of the big reasons why I'm trying this new format out. So. Um, just a little bit of a catch here, so make sure that whenever you are coming to my channel to listen to me break down music, make sure you go listen to the original if you've not heard it yet before. So, with that said, I'm sorry if this causes any inconveniences in your, your viewing experience, and I hope that you'll still stick around with this. And if, it's, if it just flat out doesn't work, and people don't like it to the point of not wanting to watch the content because of it, then we'll revisit this then. But I'm just going to be trying this now and see how it goes. And if it allows me to get my videos monetized easier and it gives a better viewing experience and shorter video times, then we'll do that. So moving along swiftly, we're going to be going to break down. We're going to be breaking down and reacting to voice plays cover of Whiskey in the Jar. Now, I've not actually heard the original for this, so this will be a fresh listen. And I've heard that there's some beefy low notes, some really nice belting in here as well. And looking at the video here, we've got Omar Cardona back with voice play. A uh, very valuable tenor voice, very, very wonderful, bright tenor tone. I love his voice very much. And for those of you that don't know, I'm trying to get a hold of him to have him on the podcast. It's going to be a difficult feat, but I am trying my best. Um, side note out of the way, so we are going to be reacting to and breaking down Whiskey in the Jar from Voice Play. So I am excited to break this down for you, and we always know that Voice Play is crushing it in the creative department. So let's see what they do with this. I'll see you in the re reaction and breakdown portion in just a minute. Here we are. Volume is good. Let's jump right in. As I was going over the court. Um, hello, low chest notes. As I That's a really thick A1 in chest from Jeff there. I was going when over the cork and carry mountains. That is so thick. You can hear the thickness of his vocal cords in the in the way he's singing this. I saw Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol. I then produced my rapier. I said, stand and deliver. Whoa, the devil he made and take it. 
Such a really complicated at walking baseline from Jeff here with his hmm vowel. Interesting. I love it. Let's go back. I took all of his money and it was a This is a Jeff arrangement, guys. The, <laughs> the snaps. It's the snaps, I'm telling you. This is how you know. Uh Jay Nunn, you were right. 100%. 100%, man. He's he's snapping off all the time. The pretty penny. I took all of his money. Ooh, listen to that chord right there. Pretty penny. I took all of his money. Um, that was one of those um Let's see what chord was that? Pretty penny. I took all of his money. Oh, oh, oh. That sounded like a B flat major chord with an added 3. Let me see. I took all of his money. Yeah, Ellie sang an added note in that triad there. It's a pretty penny. I took all of his money. Yeah. Mm. An added C in there. So that would actually be... I think that's right. Pretty sure that's right. Anyway, it was a beautiful chord there. Very modest way to start off the song here with the mm vowels and the in the background voices, as well as Jeff doing his bass line, walking bass line on a hmm vowel. So that would be a hum. Took all of his money, and it was a pretty penny. I took all of his money, yeah. And brought there was a subtle G1 in chest from Jeff there. She said that she loved. She said. She said. No, never. She said she swore that she loved me. Adding some intimacy in there with a characterized voice there. Love it, Caesar. No, never would she leave me. But the devil take that woman, yeah. For you know she tricked me. So, a little bit of articulation to kind of discuss that S Caesar is incorporating in his music or in his lines here. So, this kind of fast articulation of your vocals is very common in rap music when you go to rap fast. Now, with that said, this is something that is not as oftenly seen in other genres of music. Of course, you got your hip hop artists that will do it sometimes, and there is a there are several good examples of this. Um, for example, if you like country music and you are familiar with the same hunt, he does this in several of his songs where it's but a da but but da. So there's some fast articulation in his words in the music. The devil take that woman, yeah, for you know she tricked. Yeah, for you know. Yeah, for you know. So the words kind of run into each other a little bit, but they're very punctually articulated. And it's something that you really want to make sure you're on top of whenever you're doing it, because it can sound very sloppy very quickly if you don't articulate these fast notes and do these fast articulations in time with the beat of the music. But the devil take that woman, yeah, for you know she tricked. For you know. So, obviously this is lined up in post-processing in the DAW, the digital audio workstation, that this is, that all music is run through before it's released to the public. So this vocalism, Caesar's parts here, are all lined up in or with the beat, so this would never be an issue, but you still have to, you can't be sluggish with it. You have to understand the time signature of the music that you're singing in, 
and you have to be listening to, say, a click beat, for instance, in the recording studio when you're recording your part. And what I mean by a click beat, so in short, a click beat is exactly what it sounds like. It's a click that will be playing in your ear when you are recording. And a lot of live singers will do this through what we call in-ear monitors. And in-ear monitors look kind of like really special earbuds most of the time. And what this allows them to do, especially live, is to stay in time and sing their parts to the beat of the music and be super punctual and super precise. This is why people sound so tight live. You're wondering, are they that good? Well, technically, yes, but also with the aid of in-ear monitors and occasional click beats. Some people will need the click beats. Some don't, but all of that to say that if you are recording this articulated punch, this articulated punctual line, these lines that Caesar is doing, he very likely had a click beat in his ear playing while he was doing this. Ooh, I love that. I love that little, little section right there. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so check out this bass line from Jeff right here. So he actually, he sings his uh, C2 here. That, that C2 right there. So he sings the C2. And then he jumps immediately. He d makes a very, very fast jump to the octave above. So the C3 instead of the C2. So he goes. Dum, do, dum, dum, right there. Dum. He makes that jump very quickly. So I'll show you what I mean. So I actually did the wrong one there. So give me just a second. I just did a subharmonic. Whoops. He did that switch, but he did it much quicker. And it takes a lot of talent to do that as punctually as he just did it. I love that. I love that little descent they did there. So they didn't actually do a chromatic descent there, and I did. So that's my bad. But I feel like that's something they, they probably could have done successfully there. It, sound, it sounds really good in my head now that I think about it. But they just go from the, the C... A C chord to a B flat chord. Yeah, that would have been a really cool creative choice. That would be really cool. Anyway, all right, sorry, I was on a tangent there. Ellie introducing a little bit of grit into his voice here for a little bit of uh, characterization and uh, effect into the passion of the music. Yes, here comes the beat, guys. Lane is actually kicking in now. And these background vocals are just flowing like waves in the ocean on a calm beach. I love it, man. It's just, it's, it doesn't take away from the lead, but it's also like, hey, I'm here and I'm laying down the framework for the music. And I also put Omar as one of the kings of riffing, also along with DJ Young. And there's another individual that I know that works with uh, voice play or has worked with them before that is also another king of riffing um anthony gargiulo was one of them 
Shout out to you, my friend. Um, yeah, there's some really clean riffers that voice play works with. And Omar is another one of them. Super, super clean high riffing. Like that, yeah. Nice F1 subharmonic there from Jeff. Yeah, I, my subharmonics are doing pretty bad today, but that's this note right here. It's uh, pretty solid, brother. And the echoes from the background parts. It just, it gives it that, it, it's, the, it's the chef's kiss to what's going on in this piece right now. And of course we have variation in the percussion. At this point, I would not expect anything less. It it it's not getting stale, and I don't foresee it actually ever getting stale. It's just voice play is known for keeping their stuff creative and varied. It's not the same. And it keeps the listener engaged. Voice play has the psychology of a listener down to a science. They are incredible at keeping their listeners hooked. Okay, so Jeff did a uh, bass slide here, but where did he, where did he start and where did he finish for notes here? Okay, so he bottomed out right around a F sharp, F sharp one ish. So he started at an F two and bottomed out at roughly an F sharp one ish. He he could have barely touched an F there maybe, but we will see where the rest of this piece goes. That was so well controlled, Omar. Golly! The whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the background vocals are laying the framework here, people. I'm telling you, I am telling you, they are making this happen and they are making it happen quite swimmingly. And of course, Jeff Bet laying the bass, he is the actual backbone. And the background vocals are the laying the framework based off of the backbone here. Whiskey! That's a very nice gritty A4 from Ellie there. And a decrease in volume here. This is what they call a, uh, a very quick decrescendo. And a decrescendo translates to a reduce, uh, reduced volume. Not literally translated in the language, but in the context of music, a crescendo is an increase in volume and a decrescendo is a decrease in volume. And he did a, everyone did a very quick decrescendo here and they also cut out the percussion. And some men like the fountain, some men like to hang in. Yeah. Ooh, I like that chord. Let's listen to that again. And some men like to hear. So that was actually the a raised root, if I remember correctly. So if you sing a chord, if you have, for instance, a B flat chord, bum, 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 bum. So that's a B flat chord with an added high B flat. But the root of the chord, which is actually that low B flat, bum, that note right there 
if you cut that note and you jump straight to the third note in the chord, the D, dum, dum, that note right there, you get this. Dum, dum, dum. So you actually get a B flat chord without the root note, the B flat. And it, if you place this correctly, I, I don't know what, exactly what it's called off of the top of my head. There's a specific name for a chord like this. But if it's well placed, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to add to a, a song. Especially in an acapella piece, because you can really draw attention to the fact that there's this special kind of chord being sung without the complication of added other music and instruments. Beautiful. We just got an F1 in chess from Jeff. Those of my viewers who know me and have been following my content, you know I have talked and talked and talked into the ground about the fact that we have been waiting on Jeff to get his low F in chess, his double low F. And ladies and gentlemen, we have just gotten a low F, double low F in chest. I told you guys, this is an I told you so moment right here. I told you guys that it was coming. I didn't know when, but I knew it was coming. Now, it's very likely that he abused the crap out of his voice the night before or drank a lot of alcohol. Like, probably, did you think, Jeff, did you drink two liters of rum prior to recording this the night before <laughs> uh because not only did we get an a recorded f1 in chest from jeff here we also got a recorded f1 in chest and it was thick it was so thick like monstrously thick ladies and gentlemen we've got an f1 in chest from jeff <laughs> Roaran. That is just Roaran. That is insane. You ramble Roaran. Roaran. That is to hear that from Jeff with natural chest voice and him not having to resort to subharmonics for this anymore. Is insane. Well, he might still have to for future recordings because this is a one off situation so far. But holy crap, we've got an F1 in chest, folks. This, listen to this C2 that he has, and then he just walks down to the F1. Oh, We can't let Jeff's F1 detract from everyone else in the group here doing what they're doing. And it's so complicated, but so amazing. <laughs> Ellie's up to a mixed D5, mixed head chest voice D5 belt here. I don't know what that's called, but I love it when singers do that. Ooh, we get a little bit of taste of Caesar's lower range here. Hello. He's in the bottom of the third octave. Oh, 
you die for sure and I'm a do my die. So, okay, so two, two things to talk about here and we'll wrap this up. So, so that slowdown, that rapid slowdown right there in tempo and speed, that is called a caesura. No, it's not. A caesura is a is where the music slows down and then it stops and it pauses. That's a caesura. Um, I forgot the word for a rapid slowdown in tempo slash time in music. So, uh, bear with me, uh, Robert. I'm going to start calling you Robert now. Um, go put the name of what this is called somewhere on the screen, please and thank you. Love you, mean it. Bye bye now. Um, yeah. So that's what it's called, and that is really a really cool way to end a song. He also cut out the percussion, so. And that was a bit of a lower F chord there, and here at the end of this song in particular. At this particular moment, it actually sounds like Jeff is doing an F1 subharmonic to finish out. It sounds like a subharmonic because it's, it has the overtone and the undertone. So to me, it sounds like an F1 subharmonic to finish out, but it's kind of hard to tell because with a quieter, with a quieter chest F1, and with all the other voices blending in, it could be another F1 in chest. But I'm 99% sure that this finishing F1 from Jeff is a subharmonic. Yeah, the last the last F1 from Jeff here is in fact a subharmonic. And this is a beautiful chord to finish out. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see some behind the scenes footage, hear karaoke versions of the songs, participate in web chats, and a whole lot more, head on over to patreon.com today and sign up. We'll see you over there. Huge thanks to the patrons that make these videos and music happen. You guys are awesome. Also, huge thanks to my patrons who make my videos possible. And this will be a good way for me to transition into a little bit of a self-promotion piece, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So, guys, this video and music was insane. We got several cool things that happened in here. In particular, one of the coolest things was that we got a first recorded F1 from Jeff and Chess that I've noticed yet. And that was, for me, that was one of the highlights of the music. But, man, this is awesome. So, guys, if you are enjoying the content here on the channel, make sure you drop a like and a comment down below. Even if it's just a smiley face, it helps with the algorithm. And if you are gaining value and enjoyment and entertainment out of my reactions as well as musical breakdowns in these videos, I would appreciate it if you would go check out my Patreon page if you have the means to do so. This is the by, this is by far the best way to support the channel if you choose to do so. It is not required by any means to enjoy the content. I have plans as little as $1 a month or as much as 100 if you are feeling to like you want to support the channel in a big way. And like I said, it's not required to enjoy the content by any means. A like, a comment, and a subscription all are free of charge and they help the channel out so much more than you will ever realize. Guys, also, a I never really mentioned this much, but I need to say a happy belated 3000 celebration. We we have gotten over 3000 subscribers and I am so thankful for all of you. Every, each and every one of you who has pressed that subscribe button and gotten me to where I'm at. Y'all are amazing and I couldn't be doing this without you. And 
I look forward to seeing the next 3,000, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the road to 5,000 and 10,000. I love you. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.